Hey guys, so this is episode two of our series, Painting Your Gun. So last episode, we talked about if you should even paint your gun. And if you have decided that you should, then we're going to show you a few tips, tricks, and ideas on what you should do. Doesn't matter if you're going for a winter setup on a cheap gun, if you're going for something that will grab some attention, like this, this is just a well. It is very cheap and it has a few internal modifications. Or if you're just going for something a little bit fancier, like this P30, it has that nice rugged look and it's very quiet. Or if you're going for something more camo, like this M16. Um, doesn't really matter what you're going for, as long as you know what you're doing and you aren't too worried about it, it should come out okay. Because there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. Cut. What are you, Bob Ross? Alright, so, we're gonna go over painting your airsoft gun. Right now, we have an AK-47, which is not mine, I'm doing it for a customer. And he wants it in a woodland type camo, like this. Except, he'd like some netting over the sides of it, and he would like more parts of it not painted. So, we have, I believe, a picture of it before and after. If not, we will show you one on the EVIC website when he got it. It's a relatively cheap 8K at $95 but it does hold up to par with today's AEGs. So, step one is to take off all accessories that you do not want to paint. For step two, you're going to want to cover up the areas that you do not want to paint, such as the bottom of your grip or your entire grip. You may want to cover up um, the barrel so the paint doesn't get inside. You may want to cover up the inside of your magwell, or if you so choose, you can just leave a magazine in there and it will give it a little bit more all-around look of the camo. For step three, you're going to want to hang it up. A lot of people say that laying your gun down gives you a better view of it, or it's not silhouetted in the sun, or whatever their excuses are. Now, you can do this inside of a garage or whatnot. Just throw a tarp down, paint it up, tie it to some 2x4s in the ceiling or whatever. But you have to have properly ventilated areas, and it has to be able to draw. So, what I'm doing here is I have a strap going between two trees, and I have two pieces of string that come down, which are very thin, so I can hook the gun up to it, and it won't really cover up very much of the paint. Then after that, I just move them aside, and I repaint over those. Step four, you're going to want to apply your base color. This is the color that will be peeking through all of the rest of it. It may not be the most seen color, so whatever you decide. Here we have brown as our base color. Second, we have a light green. Third, a darker green. And fourth, we have a tan color. So in order, that is brown as the base color. Then we have light green to fill in most of the space. The darker green more highlights on top of the lighter green, and we use that over the webbing. And for the tan, we just spray that on after, maybe through a little bit of netting here and there, but mainly it's just to give it an all-around look. Next step in this process is your second coat. So, you're going to want to spray your light green paint, or your second color, in kind of a pattern. So, what we have here is the M16. Now, the pattern that I did on this was I went in kind of a zigzag pattern. So, if you can follow me, I went once there, up through here, through the center of the receiver, down the magazine, and then I continued that all the way up the free float, up to the barrel. So, that is one way to do it. You'll see a lot of other different ways. Some might just be sections, some might be stripes. There's many different ways to do this, but I found that that is the most versatile, and it works on almost all guns. So, on the other side, you have two choices. Either one, you can make it symmetrical with the first side, or two, you can make it opposite. Opposite, I do sometimes, but I kind of like symmetrical. It just makes me feel good inside. All right, so for your third coat, we are using a dark green paint. What we do is go in the opposite zig that zigzag pattern and put little dots here and there. So it would be opposite of the second coat, and that is pretty much it. The whole, the whole time you're doing this, you want to have a ladder of some sort, so you can get on top and get the top, and you want to get the bottom, because you can't leave those black. Okay, so, 
Now we're applying the webbing. We have two different styles. One of them is just a flat piece that you can lay over pretty much anything and spray on. The second one is originally a protector for different suppressors. So we use that, we can run it over barrels, scopes, magazines, you name it. It will run over and it will hold on tight. The only problem with this is that once you paint it, you have to let it dry. And if it dries, it will kind of stick a little bit, but if it dries, it will kind of stick a little bit, but you probably shouldn't have too much trouble with it. But if you leave it on there and you paint it and then you take it off immediately, it'll just smudge everything and you'll have to redo it. For the final coat, you have your tan, which is what you are using. So for that, you don't really want to go excessive. You just want to give it highlights here and there. So as you can see what we're doing, we just do little splotches, little splotches, and maybe a little bit on the tip or w the ends of the gun. Okay, so now that your gun is completely painted, you want to just leave it alone. So when I say leave it alone, I mean leave it hanging up for the rest of the day. Don't touch it, don't mess with it. If you see a few things that you want to change, you can move it around a little bit, um, grab the parts that are covered over by tape so you do not affect any of the pre-painted surfaces. When I mentioned earlier about the strings, probably an hour or so after you put the first coat on, you can move it to the side and then paint over them. And after that, just leave it alone. Then, when night comes, if it's going to rain or something, you can take it inside, hang it up inside, or if you have some way to hook it up on the flat wall or something, you can just do that. But basically what I'm saying is that you should not start touching it, adding attachments to it and whatnot for at least 24 hours. I go for 35 or so. It really lets the paint set in. And when you are done with that, you can take off all of the tape. And if you have any paint that bled out onto parts that you did not want to have paint on it, you can just take a little bit of alcohol and some elbow grease and you can get that out relatively easily. Hold on. Imagine if it just blew, the head blew off out of my face. That'd be awesome. Okay, I got a funny story to tell you right now. Um, so one time when I lived in Florida, I was trying to build a rocket out of um, vinegar and baking soda. So I had it in a um, water bottle and I made some cardboard fins or something. Set it down, shook it up, and then ran away and it didn't work. So I tried it again, it didn't work, and I was getting mad at that point. So then I took it, shaped it like this, and that's when it decided to go off. So it spit it all in my face, and it was nasty. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. There we go. Oh man. Nice.
Oh, that actually looks awesome. All right, so here's the final product. As you can see, it came out quite well. We have added a sling right here, two point. And on the grip, we have added some tape, magazine, a little bit of tape, and on the grip right here. This is the front handguard grip, the stabilizing grip. So we just did that to give it more of a rugged look, and it adds a little bit of grip, so it'll keep your hand on there good. We have added the scope right here, which we have um, added two rail sections onto the top cover of the AK, which wasn't the easiest thing, but we did get it done, and it seems to be pretty solid. So onto the paint job. The front sight post used to be completely orange all the way up, and that was a dead giveaway. So this is an, ad an adequate amount of orange, and we have brown and whatnot on the top, which is fine. And throughout the whole thing, if you want to come in closer or zoom in, that would be great. Just take a look. We have on the stock a bit of checkering, and we have some more on the front handguard. And it is very clean, has some brown splotches, some green splotches, and it is a really nice overall look. So, um, thank you for watching this. I hope it was useful. And for more content, subscribe and like.